In this video, we're going to talk about the security architect's non-technical skills. And after being an architect for about 25 years, and after coaching people that now have great tech jobs that work at Apple, Amazon, Cisco, Google, IBM, Accenture, Delight, KPMG, Capgemini, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Barclays Bank, JP Morgan Chase Bank, Zscaler, Palo Alto Networks, Nextbook, I can tell you that it's these non-technical skills that are gonna be necessary if you wanna get hired as a security architect or a cloud security architect. In fact, one of the biggest mistakes people actually mistake in their career is mistaking the security architect role with a security engineer role. And while both are needed, uh, these roles couldn't be any more different. So let's talk about some of the exciting things pay-wise about the security architecture role, and then we'll talk about why you need these non-technical skills. Now, the average salary of the security architect is approximately $229,000 per year, according to Glassdoor, although these numbers feel a little low to me based upon my experience. Now, the reason this job pays so well, the reason all architects, whether they be cloud architects, security architects, enterprise architects, or AI architects, the reason the architect role pays so much is it's a hybrid between executive skills needed, which is what we're gonna talk about in this video, and a set of technical knowledge and skills. And it's almost impossible to find both sets of those skills in the same person married together. And that puts you at the perfect end of the supply and demand curve where there's almost nobody that can do the job and there's a huge demand for the security architect job. And that's why it's gonna pay so well. But if you want these jobs, you need to learn these non-technical skills. And these are also gonna be critical skills that are required for cloud security architects and any kind of security architect. And these uh, skills, these non-technical skills will also have the biggest impact on your salary and in most cases, your long-term career growth. So what are the skills for the security architect? Well, if you understand that a security architect or a cloud security architect is a planning role, not doing no role, you'll already be advantageous. So because we are strategic planners, because we focus as strategic consultants in the areas of security, as a security architect, you're going to have to have great planning skills. And of course we teach these like we teach all these skills in our programs, but if you're not with us, make sure you get them. Now here's where you're gonna have to learn how to build a uh, strategic plan, how to build a strategic blueprint, how to go from point A to point B. And uh, some cases that'll make necessarily multiple set of steps along the way, and it's gonna take a lot of planning. So planning skills are gonna be critical. Now the next thing that's gonna be critical for a security architect is actually gonna be business acumen. And here's the reason why. As security architects, our purpose is to help that organization manage risk. But we will need to uh, quantitatively figure out or what the company's risk exposure actually is, develop a risk mitigation plan, and then build a business case to show that organization that if your risk is a billion dollars a year, spending a hundred million dollars on it is nothing to actually secure that risk by showing them that the cost to mitigate the risk or manage the risk in many cases is much less than the risk. Now, the next thing that you're gonna need, another critical uh, non-tech skill for the security architect are gonna be leadership skills. As security architects, as a rule, we're not gonna design the single security architecture our own. It's gonna take a team. And we will have to build and lead security architecture teams uh, to assess an organization's current security posture. We may need a team of security architects and other security professionals and other non-security professionals to respond to an RFI, RFP, RFQ, like a request for information, a request for a quote, or a request for a proposal, for example. So we're going to also need the team to design an end-to-end -end solution because when we get into security, we'll be dealing with network security and we may need some network experts. We're going to need some application security. So we're going to need some application experts along the way. We could be having a zero trust strategy and we might need some zero trust people. We might need some identity and access management people. So we can build in a fairly large security architecture teams in, in a big enterprise environment. Now, another set of skills we will need is any architect role, but especially a security architect role, are going to be stakeholder management skills because security can have a big negative impact on an organization's workflows, policies, and procedures. So you're going to have to be working with various stakeholders from across the business and across the business's organization, various business units, even across IT departments. And uh, 
we have to do this because each business unit will have their own goals and needs. They may have their own technology. And if we put in just the wrong security, anything, we can literally break the business. And we can't afford to do that as security architects. So we're going to have to spend a lot of time with stakeholders to make sure we understand their business and uh, tune the architecture for their business needs. And then, of course, after that, get their buy-in to support the architecture. We will also, as architects, need some very strong vendor management skills. Let's face it, security is multi-vendor. It's not like you're going to go to the cloud provider and use all their security stuff. We will be dealing with firewalls for multiple manufacturers, potentially IDS, IPS systems, data loss prevention systems, SIEM systems, all kinds of heavy-duty identity and access management systems. We'll be dealing with networking companies, application vendors. And because of this, we're going to have to be able to manage a large number of vendors and be able to perform an impact analysis of the changes they want to make to their products on the organization's end-to-end uh, end -end security. Now, as architects, we give constant presentations. Even the last part of a security architect interview is going to be a presentation. So you're going to need good, strong presentation skills because you'll be presenting at conferences. You'll be presenting to the C-suite and the board. You'll be presenting to management and even techno technical audiences. Now, sales skills. Look, you're not going to be effective in any architecture role if you can't sell. So you'll have to sell the architecture. You'll have to sell the management, uh, why you need people and resources as well. You'll have to sell the management to pay for the architecture. You'll have to sell yourself in an interview. And guess what? The better you learn to sell yourself, the more you're desirable you'll be on an interview and the higher your earnings will be because you'll make yourself look better because you know how to sell yourself. You will also need something called CXO relevancy, and CXO relevancy is how you communicate to the C-suite. See, the C-suite is not going to be excited about spending all their money on security. So you must know how to show that C-suite why they need to spend uh, money on security and what the C-suite actually cares about. And the last component you'll really need is going to be uh, excellent executive presence and communication skills. So let's talk about what executive presence is. It's when you can walk in the room and people see you as a leader. And that's about how you take up time and space and the, your vocal tone and other things. So you'll need some training on that. I know I have extensive training on that. Of course, we provide all these skills to the people that we train as any architect. But uh, just keep that in the back of your mind that you need this. And of course, architecture is a communications job. One of the reasons we can't be replaced by AI is we're talking to person to person to person. We're leading military meetings, facilitating meetings, writing documents, getting input, translating between executive needs and the engineering and what engineering can do. So lots of communication skills. Now, these are the key non-technical skills for the security architect role or, or the cloud security architect role. And guess what? They sound a whole lot like consulting skills or management consulting skills or strategy consulting skills because they are. The security architect is a strategy consultant. Strategically, how do you protect your organization from harm? Now, I say these because I love the security architect role and I love watching people get hired. And if you're in any of our training programs, you're going to have all these skills. But if you're not with us, please go learn these skills because because the security architect career, the cloud security architect career is one of the best in the world. And I want you to have a great career and get hired. Now, if you want to learn how to become a security architect, join us on our free security architect webinar. It'll be live on Zoom. We'll talk about the role. We'll talk about what we do. We'll talk about the skills you need. And then you can ask me any questions you want completely free for about 90 minutes after that on anything related to your career. Now, and if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of new tech, new videos to assist you in your technology career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.